Possibility Hub video series. I'm Carol Talbot, the creator and founder of the Possibility Hub, an advocate for awakening, encouragement, and creating opportunities for an expansion of awareness and consciousness. In this episode, my guest is Philip Gruber, one of the planet's foremost teachers of sacred geometry, light language, the indigo children, advanced healing systems, the structure of time, the angelic worlds, and an ever-growing repertoire of fascinating subjects. Philip was also featured in the critically acclaimed films The Indigo Evolution and Metaphysia 2012. His passion, enthusiasm, kind spirit and intelligence has made him a very highly respected and sought after speaker. Now they call this the age of empowerment and what you do now can and will determine the course of your life, your past and future lives, those you hold dear and the very planet itself. So in this video Philip will be revealing the true nature of karma, the physics of divine right order, personal regenesis, multi-vector holographic recoding, and the return to innocence. Hello, Phil. I'm really, really excited to welcome you to the Possibility Hub. And I believe this is going to be a particularly exciting conversation. It's said that you reap what you sow. So if you seek kindness, give kindness. If you seek love, give love. And do our actions have a consequence? And is the consequence of karma keeping us in a continual reincarnational loop? So Phil, what's the true nature of karma? Let's start our conversation there. Okay, well, I'm glad you brought up thought. Because thoughts is all we have. We are given the gift of thought. Thought is an attribute of consciousness. Even in lesson one of Charles Hanel's The Master Key, and even lesson one is a revelation where he gives the great secret of life. But besides that, everything is thoughts. I don't think people realize the extent, the actual awesome creative power of our thoughts. Um, even a transient thought that just goes in and out of your head. We produce thoughts, we generate thoughts. As I said, it's an attribute of consciousness. It's really what, we, we, what we've been given to create with. We may be God's creation, but we are created in the image of sim in similitude of God, which means that we have the same abilities. We are creators ourselves. I don't think people realize that we create with every thought, every single thought we think. Even a thought that we believe is, is transient, temporary, that's going to, we're going to see that manifest in our lives. If, if you want, let's say, you know, everybody, if you ask the average person, the average sane person, would you like to see an end to terrorism in this world? Of course, they'll say yes. But do they realize, do they really realize that every negative thought we think, a thought to harm someone, let's say, that's going to manifest itself, that's going to crystallize itself, it's going to add or accrete into a huge morphogenetic field that's going to manifest itself in acts of terror on the planet. We contribute to that. We get what we expect and we get what we think. It's always been the secret. You create with your thoughts, you manifest what you think the most about. It's always, the secret is nothing new. The secret, the source and material for the secret are the new thought authors that really came into prominence in the middle 1800s, going into the early decades of the 1900s and still continuing now. It's been this conversation that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. There's nothing you can read in the secret, in the law of attraction, about the power of thoughts that you don't find in the writings of Marcus Aurelius or Lao Tzu or Confucius or Jesus or Buddha. It's thoughts. Thoughts are everything. The mind, everything is, is mind. And again, We've been given this great power to co-create, hopefully, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes, in divine right order. What is divine right order? And the truth is, Carol, and I think, you, and you understand this, that if you don't know the rules, if you don't know the laws, you're bound to break them. And I think we create karma for ourselves, mainly because of our ignorance or our naivete that we do create with our thoughts. My favorite example is you're driving on the highway, 
you get cut off by somebody and you're at the moment you're thinking of the vacation that you're going to be taking in rome in a couple of weeks someone cuts you off on the highway you curse them out you go to rome something goes wrong in that vacation something really messes up but i wonder if people realize that they created that when they curse that person out on the highway while they were thinking their their trip to rome they programmed something to go wrong part of the manifestation template or blueprint and um, that's all good and well when life is wonderful you can go yay look what i've created but when things don't go well and as you say when the example you've just given it's like oh it has nothing to do with me and we go into the blame game that's right and the truth is and this is where we really get to the heart of it i believe and i always have believed that the greatest healing energies on the planet are the energies of forgiveness and gratitude. I wonder if people really realize that gratitude, let's take gratitude, for example, you know, the Emoto crystals, Masuru Emoto, Absolutely. and the most beautiful, and I think pretty much everybody out there is familiar with the Emoto crystals, how you project thoughts onto distilled water, let's say, or even speak them, and the water structures itself Harmon, you know, it, it, it's the, the water, the crystals that form a, ref a reflection, a reflection of those thoughts. And the most beautiful of his crystals are those crystals that manifest themselves as a reaction to or as a, as a, yeah, as a reaction to thoughts of forgiveness and gratitude, love in the form of forgiveness and gratitude, the light that those crystals can hold and radiate. And it's because of the structure Water without structure can hold memory. It can hold memory. It can hold dimensions of love, experience. So with negative thoughts, usually they're sort of amorphous. They have no shape. They have no structure, and that can't hold consciousness. It can't hold the higher love. It can't even hold much love at all. But thoughts of forgiveness and gratitude, it's the structure, the more complex the structure, as we know in light language, the more consciousness it can hold. So imagine if you become the living, if anybody becomes the living vibration of forgiveness. They choose, see it's a choice, you choose to forgive if you feel that you've been violated, if you feel you were naive or, or ignorant or you allowed yourself to be violated or that you consciously or unconsciously violated another, you need to forgive yourself and you need to forgive them because truly they didn't know what they were doing. And if you become the living embodiment of forgiveness by progressively and always forgiving, 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 you, every crystal and micro crystal in your body will have that same structure, the Emoto crystals, the ones that generate the most light. This is why Jesus referred to Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, they had the effulgence of light. Just as they walked in the world and they walked among people, they illuminated them because they gave off so much light. And it was because they knew the true secrets of forgiveness. Like you said, it's never really been about blame. It's been about giving. What do you have to do for giving? What do you have to do to be a vessel or a channel or vehicle through which grace can be projected in the world? And right in the Pisa Sophia, the Gnostic Gospel, Jesus says in his own words, of course, translated by Mary Magdalene, with progressive apology. And this is how you forgive. You make an apology. You choose, you use your thoughts to choose using your free will to forgive. And with progressive apology, the soul is declared innocent. What does apology mean? Apology means not many, Apollo. So when you forgive, when you make an apology when you apologize you're reaffirming oneness and the more you reaffirm oneness the more you will come into that resonant frequency of of love which we understand as a the emotional body's interpretation of a state of vibrational co-resonance because when you're vibrationally co-resonant with anyone or anything you automatically feel love you feel the oneness you know and so with progressive apology Jesus said in his own words, the soul is declared innocent of all intensifications of karma. I believe, and I always have, that it's the most powerful healing energy in the world. If we really get good at it, 
apologize, forgive. Because most of us, we violate or have allowed ourselves to be violated. Like I said, because we're naive, we trusted, or we were ignorant, you know, and we must forgive ourselves because karma, while we get on the notion of karma, karma, the condition of karma is manifested by what we call miasms. And miasms are these sort of dark misshapen crystals that crystallize in your DNA. You know, the double helix, one helix is electrical, one is magnetic. Each helix has codes. There are 12 codes, electromagnetic codes, or 12 electric, 12 magnetic codes, actually 24 in both helixes. Remember, one helix is magnetic, one is electric, one is matter, antimatter, particle, antiparticle. And the whole thing about ascension is those helixes coming together. When those helixes fuse together and they release other certain codes, the strands start coming together. And when the strands start fusing together, this fission fusion process, it creates this beautiful blue photonic light. It's a transharmonic, it's a radioactive silicate, it's a transluminal element. I get so excited because when it circulates through the body, it actually generates molecular transmutation. It raises the frequency and thus the body will, will convert from carbon to carbon silica. It goes up, you see silica is the next octave in the, uh, in the periodic table. So with that accelerated frequency, the particles will, the biology of the body will change, accelerate. Ascension is all about molecular transmutation, but karma gets in the way. Karma is manifested, these miasmic crystals. Remember, every thought will manifest in your DNA. And our lives are just really a projection, a holographic projection of the content of our DNA. It really reflects the content of our thoughts. And those miasmic crystals in the DNA they, what they do is they, they, they distort the shape of the helix. So instead of having magnetic and electric joining together, electrical, magnetic, magnetic, and electric, when the helix is misshapen, you have electric lining up with electric, magnetic lining up with magnetic, and that causes repulsion, polarization, the strains can't come together. The process of ascension, multidimensional integration is pretty much compromised, if not sabotaged. And so it's the presence of the, those miasmic crystals, how we use our thoughts. So it comes back to helping people understand. And, and I love the take on the word forgiveness, mm -hmm. uh, forgiving. And I'm just considering that as people listen to this, you know, particularly because I'm hearing so much trauma come up for people, you know, things are coming to the surface now for people to, to face. And some of the horrendous things that people will say, how do I ever forgive that? And particularly also, Philip, because we've been brought up in a time that, you know, we go to a doctor and give me something, you heal me, give me a pill, make it better, rather than taking responsibility. So you get people playing the blaming game and it's not my fault taking, you know, really when you understand from what you've said, truly the power of four giving um, and the power of your thoughts, how they impact uh, the miasmic crystals, how they impact your DNA, then you can see the bigger picture and start mastering your thoughts. And most of us spend our time here, there and everywhere with our thoughts going all over the place, not realizing the impact they have on ourselves, on our light that I'm that you're projecting. And I'm reminded of, uh, there's a small group that I'm mentoring at the moment. And when we're doing meditations, of course they've got busy mind and saying, oh, you know, my mind was here, there and everywhere. And so a lot of what we're doing is to get them into that silence, stasis and stillness. I wonder if people realize that most failure is because people can't hold the thought their thoughts get distracted. Their thoughts are chaotic. All the work I've seen with, with people, they, they start, but they, 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 they drop out. Or most failure in life, whether it's in, in, in personal, spiritual development, relationships, career, love, whatever it is, it's because they weren't true to their thoughts. That original thought may have been beautiful, 
but they couldn't maintain the thought and the purity and the clarity of the thought. They haven't learned to control their thoughts. And this is why it's Hanel's first lesson, as you say, to be still. First, you just got to get the body still. Later on, you'll learn how to think in that certain way that Wallace Waddles refers to it. When they, when they talk about thinking in that certain way, it's controlling your thoughts. When you learn to control your thoughts, again, the first, before anything is being still. And the people that don't think I didn't get anything, I wonder if they realize, Carol, that they got everything. They, they, they're on the path. And it's funny. And it's, again, with forgiveness, what do you have to say? You know, when people use that expression for Christ's sake, well, I wonder if they realize what do you have to do to be a clear channel for grace to come through you into the world? You have to, what do you have to sacrifice, see, for the sake of the Christos, for Christ's sake, is for the sake of the Christos in you, being able to, again, achieve Christ consciousness. You know, you have to sacrifice or just give up, be willing, make the choice to give up what doesn't serve you, what doesn't serve you anymore. And it's funny that when you, in, when you escape from prison, we have that expression in English, you're on the lamb. And lamb actually means path in many ancient ancient languages. So when you escape from prison, when you escape captivity, when you escape the bondage of our mortal coils or this biological phase lock that we've been in for a long time, you are on the path. And it's got nothing to do with sacrificing animals or lambs. It's what do you do have to do to get on the path? What do you have to sacrifice? And you talked about people taking responsibility. There aren't people that are willing to let go of what doesn't serve them. You know, they find these comfort zones, even in trauma, they find it's people. So few people understand what it's like to be free, to feel free. And that, of course, means taking responsibility for your manifestations, your creations in life. It's very easy to shove it onto another person, whether it serves you or not. At least you're free of that responsibility. But we need to take responsibility, especially now in this time of acceleration where thoughts are manifesting faster than ever before, we have to reach for a higher mantle, a higher level of responsibility with our thoughts. First, not just for doctors, do no harm. We all should take that Hippocratic oath because we all are healers, potential healers, educators, custodians, way showers, guides. We all have that within us. And even to get guidance from the higher dimensional levels, they have to be filtered through the DNA. And those, the presence of those miasmic crystals are going to distort the light. We may get pure information coming from the higher dimensions, from the higher selves, from future selves, from angels, what have you. But as it filters through the DNA, it becomes garbled, gobbledygook, you see. And I wonder if people realize that all language, we think in terms of language, Language is another great gift that all language, whether it's written, spoken, the words I'm speaking now, whether it's chanted or, or toned or danced, converts into electrical impulse in the body. And that electrical impulse is a mathematical program. We have a multitude of gates of light within us. And when those gates open, the light comes through, the light of illumination, the light of revelation. I wonder if people realize the true power they have. Look what happens when you split one atom. Look what happens when you split one atom. And while we have hundreds of trillions of cells in the body, do people really realize the power that we have? The power that each one of us has. And certainly collectively, when we get on the same wavelength. Because truly love, like I feel right now, when you feel a vibrational co-resonance, the emotional body interprets that as, as love. So when it link, we link to karma, we also look at karma passed down through the generations. And this also links to reincarnation and, uh, you know, the reincarnational loop. Are we stuck in this reincarnational loop? Because each, each lifetime, we, instead of clearing the karma, we accrete more karma. And then we come back again and again and again, which then leads us to living really on a prison planet. And we're just, as I said, going round the circle. So it said, it said in many mystical teachings that we're born in captivity. Yes. We're born we're biologically facing. And I'm so glad you brought that up. 
What we do, we do multi-vector holographic recoding. And what does that mean? I wonder if people really understand that we have simultaneous lifetimes. Yes. When we enter what's called a time matrix, a 15-dimensional time matrix composed of five harmonic universes, um, <laughs> we have many simultaneous identities that exist in other dimensions and other universes, and they directly affect us with their thoughts. They, and as we can affect them, which is why the healing that we do can not only affect those we're biologically um, related to, generationally, in terms of heredity, but also simultaneous incarnations in many other space-time coordinates. And also they can affect us. And if we are the most present, you know, in terms of time, usually, I think a, a lot of people would talk about past lives, but the, but the truth is a lot of us, and I think most of the people that would listen to this podcast sometimes confuse past lives with parallel lives. The soul will project 12 aspects of itself, the angelic parts of ourselves, will project 12 parts of itself into our harmonic universe, into our three-dimensional universe. And they choose, or what's chosen for them, or many different coordinates, space-time placements coordinates, some in our past time. They're not past lives. They are simultaneous incarnations of ourselves, our immediate soul, our incarnation, our incarnational family that are placed in different time space coordinates within this three dimensional universe. They may look to us as their higher selves. They are our kind of past selves, but not our past lives. They're members of our ink. Everybody that's listening to this podcast has at least 11 others yes. that are part of their soul family in different time space locations. It could be that we are the most present that we can exert the most influence on them. People must realize that we can do so much healing. The healing that we do and the clearing that we do can spread out generationally, forwards and back. We can even heal the future now. We can certainly heal the past now. We can heal ourselves now if we just change our way of thinking. This is really, this is, this is the truth, what we can do with our thoughts. And I'm really, really glad you brought that up. Yes, and I, I too believe that, um, you know, I often wonder my other aspects of myself. It's like, are they doing as much work as I am? <laughs> now, you also mentioned vector holographic recoding, and people may not know what that is. And we also alluded to the 15-dimensional time-space matrix. But let, let's focus on the, uh, the vector holographic recoding and what you mean by that in terms of how it leads to clearing the miasms, clearing the karma. One lifetime, we talk about a single incarnation is a single vector, a single time vector. And I don't have to tell you how difficult it is for many of us just to navigate one lifetime. Talk about multi-dimensional consciousness. But when we talk about multi-vector recoding, it means multi-vectors that we do. We have simultaneous selves, incarnational selves, not only in past lower dimensional bands, past, but we also have incarnations in the future. There are parts of ourselves that are placed in the future. Higher dimensions represent, as far as our perception goes, future time. So really the truth is that angels are our future selves. We are their past lives. You want to look at it that way, but we belong to more and more the whole thing about ascension and multidimensional identity integration is expanding into the higher, more expanded self-realized parts of the self. It's what self-realization is. It's just not our self. It's the entire self getting more and more into at one -ment, expanding consciousness, expanding love, and joining our angelic soul families, and then onto our oversoul archangelic families, our avatar families, our families of rishis, and then out of the time matrix and expanding into levels of ascended mastery. So when we talk about multi-vector holographic recoding, we're talking about when we do our healing, we are actually, it's going to extend to those 
that are related to us spiritually, that those, those simultaneous incarnations of ourselves that exist in other time space coordinates. So when we do our healing and when any healing is done, people need to realize that it's just not healing ourselves. It's really extending to families of consciousness, incarnational families, simultaneous selves. And also to be remembered is that they can affect us with their thoughts. Sometimes someone will go, how, how, did, I, how, did, how did I think that? There's a lot of incarnational bleed through happening, dimensional blending. And this is part of our growth too, that we need to stay focused. We, there is a time when we will think multidimensionally and there is a time for that. But I'm glad you, you reminded me when we talk about this time matrix we're in, we live in a 15 dimensional time matrix. There is a parallel 15 dimensional time matrix. Ours is magnetically based, theirs is electrical. This is important because the word is that parallel earth and our parallel selves that live on parallel earth are already under a form of draconian totalitarian one world order. Now, the electrically based, our parallel earth runs a few years ahead of us. And normally would manifest there, manifest here. And here is one of the great secrets of miasms. What miasms actually are, how they manifest, we know about the chakras and the vertical up and down flows. The chakras as regulators and distributing life force currents up and down, but there is a horizontal flow. There is a mechanism that regulates the flow of consciousness. We're talking about the front and the back cones of the chakras that harmonize the flow of consciousness between universes, between us and our parallels, between earth and parallel earth. What miasms actually are is a buildup of anti-particles, anti-matter. Remember, our universe is magnetically particle based, based in magnetism in particles and matter. Parallel Earth and our parallel selves are basically electrical, antimatter, antiparticle. So when that mechanism that regulates the flow of consciousness between universes is compromised because of karma, because of improper thoughts, you see, if we don't understand what divine right order is, yes, the law of one is the law of love and all that stuff, but the law of one is also a, a reality in energy, in physics, in structural mechanics. If we don't understand and honor our structure and how we relate to the cosmos, we're bound to violate divine right order. Divine right order is not just a spiritual concept. It's a concept in spiritual science, in actual physics, in metaphysics. When we create karma, generate karma individually and as a race, more antiparticles build up in the particle base of the planet and in our bodies. So it's not just particles, it's the consciousness in the form of these particles that are, that are accumulating in our, on our planet, in our universe, in our bodies. So more of the consciousness, the more karma we create, more of the consciousness of parallel earth is manifesting here. And this is why you see the structures and the infrastructures of this one world order manifesting here. And uh, it's a very interesting thing, even, even, even bringing COVID into it. Um, I don't know if we should at this point, but uh, maybe in, in the future. But the thing is that we can heal it. We don't have to manifest the same destiny as parallel earth. We can even try to heal it for parallel earth by again, by healing our thoughts. But it's an important understanding that miasms actually manifest as a buildup of antiparticles, more of that consciousness of a planet, parallel earth, that is already under one world order manifesting here, again, because of not thinking properly, because of using thoughts that don't respect natural law law of cooperation, uh, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, kindness, responsibility, impeccability, these things. And the more we meditate on these things, the more we'll become the living vibration of these things. We will be the living vibration of these higher spiritual attitudes. 
and then you'll see real changes. Because the only thing I believe that's blocking our natural ascension process is the karma, is the miasms, is these blockages that manifest in our DNA and in our lives. Because again, our lives are simply, well, not simply, holographic projections of the content of our DNA. And the content of our DNA is our thoughts. DNA is usually these diamond-shaped tetrahedral crystals. But with miasmic content, they distort the tetrahedra. They become cubes, black cubes, okay? And in a lot of the primary agendas on this planet, whether it's the diamond sun vision, the, uh, the Amazon, all of these different agendas are really based on their genetics. That's for a future conver conversation too. But I think it's just as well now that we understand what karma is really about. And there's actually deeper understandings of karma that we can talk about next time, which, is, uh, which has to do with the structure of the cosmos and a little bit of history that goes back many, 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 many tens of thousands of years, okay? Something that was done for, for our own good, but that really put the planet in a sort of protective field, what's called a frequency fence, that we'll talk about that. Just a little sort of uh, <laughs> morsel. A hint. That, you know, but I think it's important now that we understand, again, who we are, the truth of our creation, why we're on this planet, and what we were originally created to be custodians, guardians of the time portals, the stargates on this planet, not just on this planet, the stargates on this planet have access to interdimensional portals, the interplanetary complex. So everybody comes here during these ascension cycles to the, to the main vortexes on the planet, the main energy centers to try to help or not. There's always been this, Earth has always been this battleground between the forces of, let's say, good and evil, right? But a lot of this needs to be understood in terms of genetics, in terms of the true history of humanity, and even going back to the elder, the founders races. Now, again, this is submitted for consideration, not for approval. I, I always recommend people do their own due diligence, their own research, but the clearer that you get, oh, here it was, um, we need to return to that state of innocence. When in the Pisa Sophia, Jesus talks about how he actually found his mother, how he chose his mother. He was scanned the world, the earth, looking for a virgin. But the, the word virgin, actually, when you go back to the old languages, means a consciousness that lives in a state of innocence, usually attributed to a female figure, a female consciousness. And what is innocence? Was looking for a woman who had no karma. See, because what good would it have done Jesus to incarnate through parents, through a mother that had unresolved karma, would not have been able to fulfill any part of his mission. So he was looking for an innocent. And that's what virgin originally means. Yes, it means young girl and this and that, but it also means a soul whose creative energy is innocent, who really knows how to use their thoughts according to natural law, the law of one divine right order. The secret has always been the same, that we create with our thoughts and we manifest what we think the most about, our habitual patterns of thinking. And I know you, this is a lot of, of your work is really helping people understand how they manifested the lives that they're living. If they're not satisfied with it, they need to heal their thoughts. They need to really look honestly and bluntly with compassion, of course, not to judge themselves or at least not too harshly, and do what they need to do, a dedicated practice of healing themselves, clearing their already manifest karma and healing their thoughts so they don't bring any new karma in. And that's what returning to that state of innocence is. That's our return to innocence. And as you mentioned, that return to innocence, the impact that it has for people who are listening and planning on having children or have children, not to mm -hmm. be passing uh karma down the ancestral line and i also think through our discussion you've expanded on you know people are very much like well i want my life to be brilliant now i want the car i want this and it's you're you are so if you could if you could grasp how magnificent how brilliant you are and all the aspects of yourself you have the opportunity to pull pull in 
from, um, you know, 11 other aspects of yourself in different time space matrices, the soul family that you're part of, the oversoul, the avatar self, the Rishi, the Bodea, getting back to the Christos. If you understand that you are in a position where you can accrete more of, more of that, and, and the way starts so simply through mastering your thoughts, and it's, it's you so glibly and yet it's so profound if you realize what you're watching, what you're listening, what you're talking about on a regular basis, and that you touched on consciousness. Thoughts are consciousness. If you thought of them as little miniature versions of yourself, millions of them, you know, that are actually alive, they are alive, they're consciousness, and they're going out and impacting people. And as you clear them up, through this for giving and for loving others, then the light flows from yourself. Those miasmic crystals reflect. So Everything much is consciousness. We're like the genie. The genie doesn't judge the thought. The genie is compelled, impelled to, to grant the wish. So everything that we want, we actually birthed something into this world. It existed. It's all consciousness. It existed in a, in a potential in, as potential creation in the void, in the, the, the world of the Black Madonnas, you know, but then there was the word, you know, and we invoked from the void something that was in a state of potential creation into, into creation. And it is our creation, it is like our children, and our creations want to make us proud. They don't judge us. They just want to be what we want, what we had wanted them to be, to a negative thought. You have a negative thought, you birth a negative thought into this world or a manifestation of ne that negative thought. It doesn't judge you. It just wants to manifest the most negative condition in your life. Same thing for positive thought. I was yes. just not focusing on the negative thoughts. So again, positive, constructive thoughts, loving thoughts. They're going to want to, the same thing. They don't judge you. They're just going to manifest according to your wishes, you know? And so, so everything starts out with that initial thought and that intention. But if you want it to manifest as you originally envisioned it, you have to stay true to that vision. And this is why, and I always like to bring this up, this, this great key here. And I'm going to give you, uh, your, your listeners and watchers, this is a book that was written in 1918. This is actually an original copy by Theron Q. Dumont, whose real name was William Walker Atkinson, who is actually one of the great New Thought authors one of the source materials for The Secret actually wrote the book, Thought Vibration or the Law of Attraction in the Thought World in 1910. And the solar plexus is one of the great keys. Gratitude, Wallace Waddles talked about it, gratitude is a magnetic force. Being thankful actually is a magnetic force that brings your brain and your solar plexus together, merging in your heart. And that's where the gratitude is felt. But it is not the heart that rules over the emotions. It is the solar plexus. What a, an amazing key this is. The solar plexus is even developed even before the brain and the heart. That's how important the solar plexus is. The solar plexus is the gateway to the treasure house. It's the gateway to changing subconscious programs. It is, you can't express anything truly unless you feel it, but you can't access that depth of feeling and emotion. You can at a success conference because you have 5,000 people high-fiving you. <laughs> you know what happens when you get home from one of those. Where, where, where did everybody go? To maintain that motivation within yourself, if you know the secrets and it's really simple, of the solar plexus. Everything starts coming together. Charles Hanel, first lesson, remember, in the master key, the great secret of life is in the coordination of these two centers, and he's referring to the brain and the solar plexus. When you express thanks and gratitude, along with forgiveness, they come together in the heart space, and that's what radiates that forgiveness, that gratitude, eternal gratitude for all the gifts of spirit, all the gifts, talents, and blessings that we've been blessed with from this life, other lives, parallel lives, past lives, probably, certainly future lives. 
A lot of us have, most of us have come from the future and we bring that with us. But again, as we discussed earlier, when the parental karma starts kicking in, as you, as you brought out, what isn't resolved will be passed on. Not just to your children and children's children, it will spread to your simultaneous incarnations in time. So we have a very profound effect, not just on our past lives, on our children and our generations, also on future aspects of ourselves. The angels depend on us just as much as we depend on them. Because we all want to make it up together. We're all in this together. We're all feathers in each other's wings, really. We help each other stay aloft. And that's why I think it's so important in these podcasts and your work is so important because it always comes back to thinking, to thoughts, to integrity, to, to thinking thoughts, constructive thoughts, beautiful thoughts, divine, learning to think as, as J.J. Hertak and Desiree Hertak, to learn how to, again, to think in divine images and let those divine images manifest in your life. Yes, that we the power create, of you know, image as well as the power of language. So look, as we come to the top of the hour here um, very shortly, I just want to bring that back to where we started you know, I'm reminded of uh, one of my previous guests was a Dr. Dr. Anita Sanchez. And in her book, she talks about forgiving the unforgivable. And we've talked about the power of love, the power of forgiveness, forgiving. And yet for many people, it's easier said than done. You know, and, and I'm thinking of self-love, you know, and no amount of looking in the mirror going, I love you, I love you, I love you, means that you necessarily do. So what do you advise people to, I mean, do you fake it till you make it? And, I, and there's a lot to be said for acting yeah. as if, yet there's people out there who are going to say, oh, you know, the gratitude, the forgiveness, yeah, I heard that before, yeah, I heard that before, do it. What makes, what's that little key that makes the difference in terms of truly forgiving yeah. such that you feel? <sighs> you, I get it, it takes, perseverance it takes strength i i know exactly what you're saying people when they don't see the man of, when they don't see the changes right away even wallace waddles talks about this that 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 if it doesn't manifest when you think when you feel or felt that it ought to manifest you give up Hopefully. and some people give up right on the cusp of manifesting their dreams because they didn't see it manifest in their 3d reality this is why patience is a virtue <laughs> the pizza is coming that lamborghini may manifest right now as a honda but that honda is in the process of transmutating and transformation it may start out with that you know but there may be steps people get discouraged have courage have the courage to sacrifice or just let go of something that doesn't serve you you brought up a very important point earlier it's all the things that you're, you're influenced by the things you watch on television the music you listen to that's all energy it's all crystallizations of thoughts and so someone could they wonder why they haven't healed you know they, they're doing all the right things they change their diet they do this they do that the other and they're watching like horror flicks on netflix and they wonder why they haven't healed that's all information Everything is information and that, that information is resonant with your healing on that healing path and that healing track and you don't, you're not healed. You wonder why, because everything is information. Everything you do that you eat, the people you hang out with, the books you read, we have to develop discrimination. And to really answer your question, it takes perseverance and dedication, choice, using free will, the gift of free will, freeing our will and staying true to it. What's one thing you'd like to leave people, uh, leave our listeners with today? Okay, well, you know, I mean, take some time every day, as you said in the beginning, into stillness. If there are things in your life that upset you, be honest with yourself and go to the root, go to the source of this upsetness why it's upsetting you, what it is. Are you willing to give it up? Are you brave enough? Do you have the courage to release something which is not resonant with your path and your upward spiral? Have great, love something or someone enough to let them go. I know it may seem scary. Okay, love and fear can't process with the body at the same time. Make a choice. We do have choice. 
take responsibility for your life. Listen, I'm not perfect. I mess up all it, you know, two steps forward, one step back, you know, but we keep hanging in there. Our movement, everybody that's listening and watching, realize, remember that our movement is always towards a state of grace. We'll get there. Our movement is always towards a state of grace. And in moments of grace, we remember. And the more we remember, the more at one will be with everything. And that's a great place to be. Thank you. Movements towards grace. Always favorite, moving towards grace. One of my favorite qualities. Philip, I thank you so much for your wise words, your wisdom, and for sharing so much today. I suspect this is going to be a session that people want to listen to definitely more than once because there's a lot in this session that we've had together. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.